this week's episode of the State Champs Esports Show, we celebrate the 40th anniversary of the most iconic video game of all time. Plus, we've got a brand new interview and much more. Hello, I'm Candace, and welcome to another episode of State Champs Esports. We're brought to you by our friends at Lawrence Tech, Army Michigan, and Hungry Howie's. Earlier this week, the animated group Gorillaz released their new music video, Pac-Man, which coincides with the 40th anniversary of the classic game. The game franchise remains to this day the highest grossing and best selling of all time, making more than $14 billion since its release in 1980. Oh, yeah. To honor the game's 40 year stretch, we have a few interesting facts to share. The character was actually inspired by a pizza with a missing slice, and the game was originally titled Puckman. The name was changed over concerns that vandals might change the P to an F. The game designer Toro Iwatani recruited nine fellow Namco employees for 17 months of development, which was completely unheard of at that time. Pac-Man was groundbreaking on a number of levels, including the introduction of power-ups, cutscene movies, and most importantly, creating games built around a central character. Upon release, the game was such a phenomenon that it spawned hit songs, a Saturday morning cartoon show, uh, just rinsing off! Oh, Pat! Breakfast cereal. And Inky, and Blinky, and Pinky. I'm Clyde. I'm Captain. Chum Chum's delicious. And a board game. Gobble, gobble, gobble! Introducing Pac-Man. Pac-Man has been translated into every gaming system from Atari to Nintendo to PlayStation. However, the greatest legacy has been a seemingly endless stream of sequels, including Miss Pac-Man, which most critics feel is even better than the original. Over the last 40 years, there have been almost 40 different versions and variations of Pac-Man. For this year's anniversary, Pac-Man is now invading other games like Minecraft. For all the 40-year anniversary fun, head over to Pac-Man.com. And now, let's take a look at an interview I had earlier with the founder of GG Leagues. So, GG Leagues at its core is an esports tournament platform that is designed to bring esports to recreational gamers and organizers. Um, and so, we work with cities, uh, schools, recreation centers, and companies to set up and run their esports leagues for their communities. Um, you know, we help them by creating schedules, um, updating players on when their matches are going to be, updating stats, and tracking their progress and standings in the league so that everyone has a streamlined and fun experience. Um, you know, the, we really believe that there's a huge opportunity to help more and more people be able to participate in, um, in esports as it continues to grow. And so that's really where we're focused is helping give this opportunity to recreational gamers and organizers so that they're able to come together and actually build out the infrastructure necessary so that everyone gets a chance to compete. Yeah, and I mean, even like you said, with esports growing so much, and especially in like college and high school, and I know you guys work with really at all realms of yeah. just anybody who's playing not at a professional level. <laughs> um, but where do you see your like your business or your company like really taking off as as esports just booms in the last few years? So we really think that there are multiple levels that um, we are going to be helping create the infrastructure for. Um, right now, we already have what we think of as our more um, you know competitive regional leagues um, that are largely designed for the collegiate players. Um, now, when I say for the collegiate players, I don't mean specifically for the varsity teams, though. I mean for the JV teams, the academy teams, the groups of friends that just, you know, have met through gaming and this is how they want to communicate, how they want to, um, you know, showcase their friendship, a place for them to compete. Um, so, you know, more of the club sports intramural space. 
Um, and so that's already one area that we are, um, we've been running leagues for two years in um, and are lucky enough to have many schools be a part of that. Over 100 schools, including Lawrence Tech, are playing in our leagues at um, the collegiate level. And then we also have what we just launched a few months ago, which is our recreational level, where we've been working with cities and recreational departments to help set up a lot of youth um, community leagues in their different communities, right? So um, anyone from as young as you can pick up a controller through, you know, um, heading off to college, if you're looking for a place to compete or to hang out with some friends, um, meet new people through esports, um, we're one of the first um, companies that is able to bring that experience to your local community centers so that they're able to get these esports leagues off the ground and give these players a, a place to compete. Yeah. Um, and so to kind of complete that, we eventually see ourselves moving into the adult recreational space as well, where maybe you competed in the collegiate level or you competed at a high school level, and now you're just looking to have some fun, um, you know, continue to meet people or participate in esports. Um, so we're going to be building out some infrastructure there so that people of that demographic are able to compete as well. Um, so basically, so someone like me who is not very good at video games and certainly is not turning pro still has a chance to compete. <laughs> I know, I feel like everyone has a short-lived dream of like, oh my gosh, I can become a professional video game player. And then you're like, well, not uh, as easy as I thought. <laughs> uh, my, mine was very short-lived since my younger brother has been beating me at video games for most of my, most of my life. And so <laughs> it happened. It, yeah, I'm not even the best in the family of video games. It so <laughs> makes that dream pretty short-lived. <laughs> well, so, okay, explain to me. So, would I need, if I wanted to be a part of GG Leagues, would I need to have, a like, a team ready? Or could I? Or, or is it something I could just kind of go in on my own and be put into, some like, a league and, and maybe into a team and something like that? Or how would someone, like, go about, like, what do they need as far as to be prepared to, to join in. Yeah, so uh, the main thing you need is just the passion for esports, right? If you want to compete, we want to give everybody who wants to do that a chance to do so. Um, so, you know, whether you have a full team, um, you know, we think it's always, esports itself is just always more fun with people, right? So whether you have a full team, um, you know, that's a great way to enter and join the league. Um, if you don't have a team and you're looking to meet new people and form a team, um, we have some, you know, plenty of leagues that are designed for people like that to meet others in their community as well. Um, we have, you know, channels that are meant for you to connect with new people that um, you can set up new teams with. And then the, the goal is hopefully you meet new friends through there and then they become lifelong friends of yours that you can continue to game with in GG leagues or even outside of the league as well. I think for us, you know, um, we're always looking for other partners, other communities, um, other people that are interested in participating in something like this. Um, the easiest way to find us is our website is www.ggleagues.com. Um, you know, from there you can see the different kinds of leagues that we have going. Um, you know, partner organizations that are interested in offering something like this um, can also reach out to us at intramurals at ggleagues.com um, or directly to me at eric, E-R-I-C-H, at ggleagues.com. Um, and we'd love to find more people that are passionate about this that we can work with. Um, so, you know, we can get more and more people gaming. From Farmville to Minecraft, agriculture simulators have become surprisingly popular. Let's take an in-depth look at one of our favorites. Chuck back with you for another game review. This time we're taking a look at the indie hit Stardew Valley. Developed by Concerned Ape and released to all major platforms in 2016, including a mobile port in 2019, heavily inspired by the Harvest Moon series that was exclusive to Nintendo, this simulation RPG puts players in charge of running a farm, which includes tending the crops and raising livestock, among many other things. You start the game as an office worker who is gifted a plot of land by their grandfather and leave the big city to move to Pelican Town, a small, quaint town where everybody knows everybody. There are about 30 people that live in the town. 
You can choose from a few different farm map layouts, all geared towards how you want to play the game. Do you want to do more fishing, mining, logging, or fighting monsters? You can even pick one that has a little bit of all four. There are also quests that you can complete to help out the town fixing up the community center, or just help the town mayor look for his lost shorts. With different festivals, birthdays, and celebrations throughout the town, you'll have plenty to do all year long. You can check out this fun and very relaxing chill type game on Steam and on your favorite console's app store. As always, have fun and good luck. All right, thanks Chuck. Well, that's all the time we have today, but before we go, remember to support Lawrence Tech, Army Michigan, and Hungry Howies. Everyone at State Chance Esports thanks them for helping us bring you the show every week. I'm Candace, and I'll see you next time.